In this video we have a block of just mass M and it is connected to three different springs. They each have the identical spring constant, we'll just call it K, and the springs are uh, have identical length before they're compressed or expanded. We'll just say they have a length of one each. And the sides here of each spring we can imagine being connected or affixed to an equilateral triangle. Now what we're going to do is move the mass M down to here. So we're going to extend this spring. We can call this spring B. This one gets extended down to here. Then these springs here we can call this spring A and this one spring C. These are going to get compressed. They're like this and now they're going to be down like this. And we want to know then when we put the mass down to here by compressing this spring and this spring and extending that spring and then release it, at what point will the mass or the block have its maximum uh, kinetic energy? Or a better question would be, what would be the maximum velocity of this? So again, it's here. We put it down to here, release it. When we have to release it, what will be its maximum velocity? Now, in video, I think it was number six, we determined that when we have a harmonic system that the kinetic energy plus the kinetic, the potential energy plus the kinetic energy of the system equals the total energy. And that's always a constant. So as we talked quite a bit in video six, if we're at a point in the system where the potential energy is zero, then the kinetic energy is at a maximum or if the kinetic energy is zero, then the potential energy is at a maximum. And also when then in video six, we were able to show that the maximum potential energy equals the maximum kinetic energy. And again, that was uh, all discussed in video number six in our series. Uh, analytical mechanics. Well here it might be easiest if we recognize that when at this point all the springs are relaxed right here say at point B but now when we displace it down here to point A well then spring B that's going to be maximally extended and spring A and spring C they are going to be maximally contracted. So down here then is where it will have its maximum potential energy. Then when we release the particle and it's swinging back and forth, when it gets to this point at point B, that is where it will have zero potential energy because at that point, at that moment in time, when the particle M reaches point B here, all the springs are relaxed. And of course it keeps right on going and recompresses the springs, but the point is that at here the potential energy is zero, so after we take the particle or the mass or the block, whatever, and put it down here at point A and let it go, at this point the potential energy is zero, so that would have to mean that the kinetic energy is maximum. And of course, if the kinetic energy of this is maximum, then its velocity has to be maximum. We know that the kinetic energy of this, when it's maximum, would be one half m v maximum squared. So because the kinetic energy is maximum at this point, then that's when it's going to have its maximum velocity. Now we need to determine what that is. So again, before we determine the numbers here, the way this is set up, 
Right now all the springs are relaxed. We move this down to point A so that this spring is maximally extended. These springs here, A and C, they are maximally contracted. So this is when it's going to have its maximum potential energy right here. Then we let it go. Now it's going to be moving upward. Here the potential energy will be zero. The kinetic energy will be maximum. Then it keeps moving. But at this point is where it has the maximum kinetic energy. At this point then is where it will have its maximum velocity. How can we determine what that is? Well, we know the maximum kinetic energy equals the maximum potential energy. And when it's down here at this point, that's when the system has its maximum potential energy. And in video six, we showed that the potential energy in general is one half the spring constant times the displacement squared. So when this, this is moved down to here, if we can determine what the lengths of the springs are at this point, then we will know the displacement for each one of them. And we can use our formula then to get the expression for the maximum potential energy. If we know that, then we ought to know the maximum kinetic energy. And if we know that, then we can solve for the maximum velocity. So that's how we're going to approach the problem. Let's look at how this is set up. An equilateral triangle. So this angle is 30 degrees. And if we move the particle or the block from point B down to point A, well here we have this triangle. This is 90 degrees. That's 30 degrees. It has a hypotenuse of 1. So the length of this side is just going to be the sine of 30 degrees, which is 1 half. And the length of this side will be the square root of 3 over 2. Same thing for here. We tried to draw this to scale as best we could, but A is right in the middle here. So this is the square root of 3 over 2. This is the square root of 3 over 2. And this is 1 half. So for spring B, its displacement is it was 1. Now it's going to be down to here. So its displacement is going to be 1 half. Now, for spring C, it was a length of 1. Now it's being compressed down like this. So its new length is this. So for spring C, its displacement is going to be 1 minus this. And that will be the same thing for spring A. Here it was of length 1. And then now it's going to be compressed down to a length of the square root of 3 over 2. And again, this length is the square root of 3 over 2 because that's the cosine of 30 degrees. And the hypotenuse here is just 1. So this had a length of 1. It's been compressed now to the square root of 3 over 2. So the amount it was compressed would be 1 minus the square root of 3 over 2. So for each spring, we know the amount of displacement. And the kinetic energy, or the potential energy, at this point, the general formula is 1 half k times the displacement squared. So we can easily calculate the potential energy for spring B for spring A. 
and for spring C because we know the displacement for each spring. So the rest of the problem should be pretty straightforward. Let's see how this works out. You would have that U max and we have U maximum right here at point A. That will equal one half. Each spring has the same constant, same constant K for each spring. Each spring has the same constant and the same length one. So this will be one half K times this squared for spring B, or that is one fourth, plus then we'll have one half K for spring A and spring C, but that displacement is the same for each one, and it looks like this would be two minus the square root of three divided by two that is for spring A and for spring C. So let's consider these together. The displacement is this squared times one half K. We'll add this together. That spring A. It is also spring C. So when we add them together, that one half is going to go away. So we'll just have this. So the maximum kinetic energy will be from spring B plus spring A and spring C added together. So we have 2 minus the square root of 3 divided by 2 squared times K. Let's make certain that we have this right. The amount of displacement for B, that's one half, squared is one fourth. That's one half the spring constant times the displacement squared. So we're okay with that one. Then for spring A and spring C, they both have a displacement of two minus the square root of three over two. So we square that and it's times one half K. That's it for spring A and spring C. So when we add them together, the one half goes away. We just have that, which we have shown right here. So here then is the maximum potential energy. And as we stated earlier, that also has to equal the maximum kinetic energy. So that is both. And again, why that's so, we explained back in video number six in our series. So what we have then is that the maximum kinetic energy, which is this, is equal to this expression. So all I have you do now is just make some space, erase this stuff, make some space, set this equal to this and we should be able to get an expression then for the maximum velocity of our block. That is after it was stretched down to here and then released allowed to go back and forth. So remember this equation and remember this expression. We're going to set them equal to each other. So we have one half, looks like one half m v maximum squared for the block equals one eighth k, we'll say k over eight plus this squared. Two squared is four. This term we already have right here, so we don't need that. And then up here, when we square this, 2 squared is 4 minus 4 times the square root of 3. 
3 squared, the square root of 3 squared is 3, so we have plus 3. That's this term times k. So we have it like this. We can modify both sides of the equation by 2 if we want to. So that will go away. This will be divided by 4. This will be divided by 2. So we have this expression. And it looks like we could simplify it if we wanted to. This will equal k over 4, the spring constant over 4, plus, let's put this over 4 too. 4 plus 3 is 7. So we have 7 minus 4 square root of 3. But if we double this, then we double this. So we have 14 minus 8 times the square root of 3, and that is times k, and that equals m, the maximum velocity squared. So let's see what we have. This will equal over 4. Here we have 14k plus 1k. So that's 15 minus 8 times the square root of 3 times k. And divide that by m. And that will be v max squared. So it looks like then that the maximum velocity will be the square root of this. And actually, we can say plus or minus the square root of that of 15 minus 8 times the square root of 3 divided by 4 times the mass times the spring constant. And we can say plus or minus that because it depends upon the direction of it whether the particle, we have it, we, we displace it down here, we let it go, it goes up, it reaches that point, it has a maximum velocity, it goes up for a while, then comes back down, and at this point, once again, it will have its maximum velocity. So this will be plus or minus, depending upon the direction that the particle is moving in at that time. But that's the mass of the particle. That is the spring constant. Each spring had the same spring constant. So that would be our expression then for the maximum velocity of the particle. Um, that's it then for this video. We referred back as we were setting this up um, to video number six. And the playlist for the video in analytical mechanics is at the uh, website digital-university.org.